This is it. What's up, everybody? This is Ben. By now, you probably know that there is a huge update version 1.8 for the Roland MC-101 that gives us full access to the synth engine. Finally, I've been trying to make this happen for a long time, uh, but it's here. Roland did it for us. It is amazing. And in this video, we are going to talk about, we're just going to go through the manual. We're going to talk about every part. We're going to make a little sounds. I'm excited. Stick around. It, let's go. All right. So I've got an initialized preset here. And like I said, we are just going to go through how the synth works. Now, for more detailed descriptions about how the synth engine works, do check out my series on Xenology Pro, which is the, it's the VST access to Zencore. This is the MC-101 access to Zencore, but Zencore is very, very similar. So it will give a lot of insight, I think, even if you don't use Xenology Pro, I think that will help give a lot of insight to how this works. But I mean, I'm so excited to have it here on the hardware. So we are going to talk about it just on the hardware today because it's amazing. Like it is. I can't, it's great. I really like, honestly, I think if you stuck this like next to a Blofeld or something, which is like, if you don't know about the Waldorf Blofeld, it is a staple of like keyboardists and like gigging musicians that need synth sounds because it's about this size and it can do a ridiculous amount of things with synths and it's four part multi timbral, which is what we have here. So pretty cool. And this synth engine, I mean, this just, it sounds great. So let's get into it. First up, this is an initial tone, just like that. And I'm going to hit shift and sound. And I'm going to scroll once. Oops. Well, it normally comes up to setting first, but we're going to scroll once to partial and we are going to be in partial edit mode. And like I said in my other video, if you haven't seen my video about all of the new features in the update, check that out. But we're here. So like I said in that other video, once you click enter partial mode, this, this is your synth. Forget the rest. Forget that we're in a groove box. Forget that it's an MC 101. This is a synthesizer now. This is full access to Xenology. This is great. It's great, trust me. So we're just gonna go through every screen. So the way that this works is you scroll the knob and it changes screens. Here, up here, we have, it tells you what screen you're on. This gives you a name for the screen that we're on. And then it tells you how many screens there are in this name. So common right now, there's two screens. We go from two to one, one to two, easy peasy. And then for each one of these labels here on the bottom, uh, we have, you can either, you can change it with the knob here, and that tells you what it is also, gives you the full name. Or you can hold this button, which tells you the current value and the name, which is useful. Uh, and then you can scroll with this value knob here, uh, which is very useful. So we're just gonna go through everything. Just real quick, we're just gonna buzz through everything. So in the common section here, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. In the common section here, we have uh, octave. And so in the common section, this is gonna do it for all four partials. So Zen Core has four partials. Each, par each partial has an envelope for pitch, amplitude, and filter depth. Uh, it ha Each partial has its own filter and each and then there's two LFOs per partial. And then, so each partial is its own synth, but then partials one and two can be modulated together and partials three and four can be modulated together in a few different ways. Um, and that's the basic structure of a Zen core patch. And then obviously the multi effects are another layer on top of that. So in the common section, we're just covering uh, like broad strokes types of things. So octave, uh, mono poly, if you set it to mono, you know, you can do mono synth stuff. We'll leave it in poly for now. Portamento, you can turn on. And this is the portamento time. Portamento is this like glide stuff that you're familiar with. Some people call it glide. Um, I think some synths call it legato, but that's technically a slightly different thing. Not that important. It's there if you need it. Uh, next page, we have analog feel. This is a really cool parameter. Um, I mean, it does, it just, it messes up your sound, right? So this is your normal sound. Very crisp. 
Uh, you turn this all the way to zero. Chris. Around 50%, it starts to get a little crazy, and then all the way. You're starting to really get out of tune. But I think around, like, like I don't know, 15, 30. It can help with like machine gunning types of types of problems that you might have in a digital synth. Um, so some I usually leave it up a little bit, but you can or not. Uh, and then there's chorus tune, which tunes by semitones. In case that's something that you want to do, but we'll leave it at zero for now. So that's for the common section. Now, for the oscillators, every oscillator has the same two pages, but the two pages change depending on what type of oscillator you pick. So. Do check out my other video for like an in-depth explanation of oscillators and their structure. But basically there's two pages for each oscillator. These are for oscillator one, oscillator two, and then there's a th another page that's like the, the modulation between oscillator one and oscillator two. And then you have the same for oscillator three, the same for four, and then the modulation between three and four. So that's the next bunch of pages. So let's go. The first thing on the first page is the oscillator type. Uh, by default, most of them are virtual analog, which is VA, but you also have uh, noise, super saw, PCM sync, and PCM. And I'll talk about them just briefly here uh, because each one changes the other three knobs that are available. So noise is just noise. Doesn't matter what key you hit, it's noise. It can be useful, it's just noise. Next one, I love this one, it is a super saw. If you ever tried to make super saw on like an analog synth, uh, it's a pain. Uh, but a super saw is just a sawtooth wave and then more sawtooth waves that are slightly detuned and it makes this big, thick, modern sound. And you can go from like, Chris, this is the detune amount. It's how much each saw wave is detuned from the next. And uh, this doesn't go high enough to get too crazy, but it's useful. Uh, so that's super saw and noise. Uh, next is PCM sync, uh, which I will talk about why it's different than PCM in just a minute. But your option then is uh, there's like 40 some of these different waves that can be really useful. That's PCM sync. Um, they are useful for making really wacky sounds, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there's virtual analog, which is what you expect it to be, and then some. So you have saw, square, triangle, sine, right? Normal stuff. Ramp, uh, which you can see pictures of what these look like in my other video. Uh, but it's useful. Uh, you have Juno, which is like a saw wave with, um, like modulated by a square wave. Uh, you have two different triangle waves and a sine wave. And those are just like noisier, clickier versions of your normal triangle and sine, which can be useful for different sorts of things. Uh, all of them have the ability to be pulse width modulated, which is pulse that you can set the pulse width. Oops. Right. Very cool. And then do keep this in mind because it's not necessarily straightforward. This pulse width modulation will apply LFO2 to the pulse width. Right? Now I'm doing it on a square wave because that's sort of traditional, but you can do this to saw waves or triangle waves, which actually sound basically the same at full volume. The triangle is pulse width modulated into a saw and the saw to a triangle. But on the other waves, uh, it can be interesting, right? That's cool, it's kind of like a brassy print sort of, sort of vibe. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. There's a lot of options that you can do with this. I'm gonna set this back to zero and I'm gonna set this back to 64, which is in the middle. Uh, and then, oh, and then there's PCM. So PCM is a sample, uh, you can choose from samples that you've loaded here and uh, or the internal sounds. So the internal sounds are in three banks, A, B, and C. And I think altogether there's close to 1500. 
I, I assume, I'm not a real hardware guy, you probably know this by now, but I assume that they come from old gear, from gear that I never had, and so the banks feel not super logically arranged. So I did make a cheat sheet, um, which looks like this. I don't know if that's super legible, uh, but I hope that it is. Maybe it's more legible here. So you can take a picture of that. I'll put it on my Patreon. Maybe I'll put it on the Facebook group or something too. Uh, I just went through in Xenology Pro and they're the same PCM samples. I just went through in Xenology Pro and labeled them according to what seems right to me. I just sort of grouped them. I just made stuff up as I went. They're labeled in Xenology Pro. You can sort through them, but you can't sort through them here. So it's useful, really useful to have something like this. Um, and I'm just looking at it. I think we're actually closer to 1700 PCM samples to choose from. Um, and so just real quick, uh, like there's some violins and stuff. And I mentioned this in the other video. I think this is a little bit more than just a sample. And I think that because if you ever tried to take like a piano sample and put it all across your, your key bed, right? It doesn't sound good at the bottom or at the top. Here it sounds fine in the middle. We'll go all the way down. That doesn't sound too bad. And we go up. Is it perfect? No, but I think it sounds a lot better than a just a sample would. And then the other thing is if you just hold the button down, I might turn it up a little for this. You hear how it's still going? Samples don't do that. I'm just saying, I don't know exactly what's going on here, uh, but but there's something go there's something to it, and I think it sounds pretty nice. And they can especially be super useful as layers with other like synth sounds. Um, so let me turn this back down. But like this is this is just one piano sample on one oscillator, right? You still have three more oscillators and multi effects to, to mess with. Um, so so yeah, there's all sorts of stuff in here. You've got organs sampled in, you got, that's more organs, we're still on organs. You got, you know, your MIDI guitar samples, but you also got, you also got, let me, okay, look, I gotta go back to my cheat sheet. I'm not that good at this stuff yet, but I'm sure you can learn it with time. Uh, I actually have a little one of these that like fits, if you just shrink it down, you can just tape it underneath, uh, which can be kind of useful, but like, if we go to bank B, which are more like synthy sounds, in my opinion, uh, you got like, what was, uh, I thought I saw one here. Ramp wave, like MG saw two. Like that's just sampled from a synth that, you know, MG might be a normal representation of. You can take a guess what that might be. So like stuff like that is really cool. You got, oh, the other thing, which I think is super cool and we'll talk about in a little bit. You do have like, this is the sort of time when it's useful to like use this wheel to get close at least. You got numbers, whatever. You got these waves. Um, but what I wanted to, what I wanted to get at was like, you got like percussion samples, all the percussion samples that are in here. Also you can use as an oscillator. That's wild. And, and hold on. This is important. If I come over here, you need to load the sample into the project before you can use it. But look, if I load, no, you know what? I don't even need to do that. We're gonna come back here. All right, we have that, right? Now we're just, we're just gonna click here and we're gonna click, uh, we're gonna click on wave file. And let's say I wanna come to like, I don't know, I got weird stuff on here, right? Um, Ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Vocals. What do I have here? I just downloaded a bunch of weird free stuff from the internet. You know how it goes. What's this sound like? Tell me, babe, you wanna leave this Sure, why not? Oh, it's a big sample. Let's see what happens. We're importing it. Lovely. Great, okay, so now I'm gonna hit sound. I'm gonna go to sample edit. I'm gonna 
Raise the start. Let's go. <laughs> that sounds pretty neat, actually. So we're going to leave it with that. But now we can go into partial, right? And we've got sample. And it's, uh, Let's go. that's our sound. Let's go. And it's right there. And now we can layer this with synths. Or we can do all sorts of, like, we can layer with synths. We got the multi-effects. We can do... One oscillator. You got you got four of them, right? Cool stuff. It's cool stuff. So that's page one of the oscillators. Then these are more more straightforward. You got your partial switch on and off. Easy course tune. Normal, but you can you can like make chords that way if you tune the oscillators differently. Uh, you can do fine tune and your level just to mix it, right? Let's go. Lovely. You have these options for every oscillator. So I'm just gonna go back. We're gonna switch this to virtual analog and that will become apparent why in a moment. We're gonna turn on partial two. And now we've got two oscillators going. So partial two, exactly the same as partial one. You can use your imagination for how we're stacking them. We're gonna talk about structure very briefly. Again, check out my other videos for more detailed explanation, but you got a few options. You got sync, ring mod, X mod, and X mod two. That's all of them. That's all of them. No sweat. So sync resets oscillator one every time oscillator two crosses the threshold. I think that's how it works. It might be the other way. Do you can also check out the manual. There is a manual. Uh, these are all explained in the manual. So if I say something wrong, you can let me know in the comments. But uh, you can also just check the manual. Uh, so sync. Uh, but, but, but the oscillator of partial one is reset at pitch cycles of partial two. So that means you're playing oscillator one at the frequency of oscillator two, which sounds not that exciting, but you can do cool stuff with it. So actually, yeah, if I do, I want to set, I actually want to set this. So the reason PCM sync exists as a distinct set from PCM is that PCM sync works when you're using the sync function. So the sync function works only if oscillator one is set to virtual analog or PCM sync. So if we set PCM sync and we pick like a noise one. Oh, it's already, it's already set, right? This is what it sounds like without sync on. But we set sync on. You can do, you can get some wacky sounds out of it. So let's do oscillator twos, let's do saw. But even more exciting is let's set oscillator two to, I don't know, a different PCM sync wave. And then again, without, sounds like that. So it can be a really cool way to get different textures into your sounds. So bear that in mind. You can also then, you can just layer regular stuff on three and four, or you can use three and four to sync with each other. And you know, there's a lot of options. Um, next up is ring mod. I believe ring mod, ring mod is gonna work better. Oh, you have, so you have the ring level, you got the level, the independent levels of each oscillator that you wanna put out. Um, and ring mod, I mean, ring mod, I think works better with virtual analog stuff, though I think it's possible to do. So ring mod is just, you're just changing the amplitude, right, of the, you're changing the amplitude of oscillator one according to oscillator two. It's like frequency modulation, but it's amplitude instead of frequency. Uh, and it's called ring modulation because of the circuits that are used for it. Uh, X mod, cross mod, cross mod, I, so I checked this, this isn't in the manual, but I checked this while I was filming before, then the audio got messed up. So when you set this to X mod, X mod, X mod, not X mod two, just X mod. It's a lot like frequency modulation, though I'm not sure exactly what it is. Roland has a few different definitions for what X mod or cross mod means. But if you set PCM sync as one of the oscillators and PC or in like virtual analog or whatever as the other one. You get weird stuff. 
which is great, because that's what we want. Turn that down, turn that up, and you can turn the mod depth up. You can get really wacky stuff with that. Uh, that's cross mod. Cross mod 2... Cross mod 2 doesn't work with PCM Sync. Cross mod 2 is, as far as I can tell, just FM synthesis. When I made my FM synth pack, I just used cross mod 2. I think that's just, it's just FM synthesis or phase modulated synthesis, which is basically the same thing. Um, so yeah, so if you set both of them to virtual analog, you will get sort of what you expect out of this. They can be whatever shape you want, but most common is like sine waves. And then if I like, if I change the chorus tune of two, you'll start to get those FM sounds that we love. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's super flexible. Uh, and that is the structure screen. So oscillator one, two, and structure one and two is the same as oscillator three, four, structure three, four. They don't talk to each other, but they talk, you know, amongst themselves. Um, so yeah, so there's just, that's, there's a lot of flexibility. I'm just turning off oscillator two and I'm going to turn, uh, oscillator one back to saw tooth. That's that. Next up, we have our filter section. So this, let's see. You've got a few different types. Uh, low pass, band pass, high pass, peaking, different low pass shapes. Cut off. Right? Resonant. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> You can do resonant stuff with it, which is pretty neat. Um, and then envelope amount. So envelope depth in the middle is zero, and then you can apply the envelope positively or negatively. Bear that in mind. Uh, all right, then we have here, I need to look at the manual for this. So this is uh, TVF or VCF as the filter type. TVF, this is from the manual. TVF stands for Time Variant Filter, and is a filter that allows detailed settings to be made for the time varying change in the sound's frequency components, right? So you can change a few different things for this. Uh... But I, I think I think that what they mean is just that the, like the envelope works, but I'm not certain. Uh, but you can change the slope anyway. Uh, VCF, I think is like modeled modeled VCFs. Uh, I think they're modeled after like real synths. So if you set it to VCF and you come back to type, uh, you get a few different synth names that you may recognize that are options. Uh, VCF will impact your voice count limit. Uh, they, they let you know here that that's using extra processing power to specifically model those filters. So be aware, TV, uh, TVF I think normally works fine. That's what you heard just a second ago. Um, but yeah, that's the filter. Now I should mention, I've mentioned before that all of the synths are, all of the partials work as their own synthesizers, but you see there's only one filter here. Uh, there's a trick. If you hold shift and you click any of these, you can see it says partial one edit off and on. I have to keep hitting it or else the screen will go away. Um, but it lights up when it's on and it turns dim when it's off. Uh, so if you only want to edit the part, the filter on one of them, you just only select one of them. And this way, with this one screen, we can edit four different filters at the same time, uh, or just one at a time. So think of this not as there's one filter, but there's one filter screen that you can point at whatever filters you want. Uh, but there's actually four filters, which is really cool, I think. So like, so just, just, just as a for instance, What's a good, let me see. Uh, if we do a saw wave on oscillator one and a square wave on oscillator two and slide over here to the filter cutoff, lower the rhythm. So now if I, I'm gonna turn off three and four and I'm gonna turn off two, so we should only filter the saw wave now. Right? And then we can go the other way. 
only filter the square wave. So you really, and then we can filter both. Uh, so there's a lot of, again, there's a, a lot of editing potential there. And actually, I really like that this is, it's very quick. It's very quick to edit the filters on all of them uh, how you want to. And I really like that. So that's filter. Next up is envelopes. There's three envelopes, uh, filter, amplitude, and pitch. And you'll notice, you'll notice when you look, it says T1A, T3D. That doesn't say attack, decay, sustain, and release. Uh, if you look at the envelopes in Zen Core, they're like five or six stage envelopes. But, so you only have the four parameters of the full envelope, which means there's a couple of things you might not have some, you might have some trouble editing on the inbuilt patches. But, uh, th these are selected to be the normal ones. So they're attack, they're A is attack, decay, sustain, release, which you're probably familiar with if you're watching this video. Uh, but attack, um, well, never mind. Before I get there, that's what it's set to by default. If you come to screen 18, you can turn on ADSR mode, which will ignore the other more complicated stages of the envelopes and just give you attack, decay, sustain, and release. So by default, ADSR mode is off, um, but it's easy to turn on, and then you have your normal ADSR here. So uh, for pitch, or for filter, which is the first one, we have to turn the envelope depth up and the cutoff down because we're if we're applying the envelope up in the positive direction, it will push up on whatever cutoff is established. So we're going to lower sustain. Uh, you can set your attack decay that way. Um, obviously release exists also. I'm just gonna turn this off for the moment so it's obvious, but hopefully this is not too complicated. If it is complicated, it's not, It's I promise it's not too hard. So attack is just the time that it takes to get from no volume to full volume. To uh, sustain is the level that it will come to and rest and hold while you hold the note. And decay is the amount of time that it takes to get from the full level after the attack phase down to the sustain level. And then release is how long it takes to go from the sustain level to zero when you let go of the key. Uh, so. Let's start on the amplitude. Oh, I forgot to turn the cutoff back up. Let's start on the amplitude. So you can hear attack to get to full volume. Sustain is normally full by default, but if you lower it to halfway and lower the decay a little, you can hear it go woo. And then release up. That's ADSR. That can be really useful for like controlling like the, the first sound that you hear and that's important for modeling like brass instruments or whatever. There, there's reasons you might want these things, but like the most standard sound is all three of these knobs to zero and then sustain up. That's it. All right, pitch envelope, I will say is much easier to edit in ADS mode or not ADSR mode. So you turn ADSR mode off to edit the pitch envelope. It's not the most convenient, but it's like one step. And again, I can't imagine having a synth this powerful in here, so it's something that I'm willing to accept. Maybe you're not, but that's okay. Uh, but the reason for that is that depth is not an option on the when ADSR mode is on. Um, and I'm not sure why. And usually I think you don't need, so, so when you turn ADSR mode on, you have ADSM, ADSR. When you turn it off, you have depth ADS. And I think normally for pitch envelopes, you don't need a release phase. But if you do, you can still edit it. You just have to switch back and forth, uh, which is kind of a pain. But, uh, but you can turn the depth up um, and you can turn the sustain level, turn the decay. Right, you can do stuff, which is nice. Uh, this is good, like this is how you can make like kick drums out of sawtooth waves and stuff, uh, which if you want me to do like a real sound design tutorial on here, those sorts of things, uh, like how to make X sound on the MC-101, I think I'd have a lot of fun with that. If that's something you want, let me know in the comments. Uh, but for now, there's plenty of tutorials out there for how to make like a kick drum in that way. So our sound is normal again, LFOs. Now, LFOs work the same way uh, as the filter and the envelopes, which is you can just point them, if you're editing, just point them to which one that you want to edit. You can hit shift and turn off the ones that you don't want to edit, or you can edit all of them at once. Um, 
So the options here, we have wave, which are sine, triangle, saw up, saw down, square, random, trapezoid, which is kind of a neat shape. It's, it's there if you want it. Sample and hold, which is um, it, it, every cycle, it picks a random value and stays there, which you can hear, well, it's not, excuse me, it's not set to anything, but say we set it to pitch. Uh, here we have filter depth and pitch depth, so if you want to send LFO1 to pitch, all you do is turn this knob up. So if I turn the rate up now, you can see it's just picking a random pitch every time. I don't think that's quantized to anything. It's definitely not, but it's neat. And you, if you want to do it just like a little bit, you have that option. You have that option. So uh, you got sh uh, shape, this one is rate, filter depth, pitch depth, and then the next page you have whether it fades in, how much it fades in, sync to tempo, uh, amplitude depth, and pan depth. So that's, you have four destinations right here that you just got to turn a knob, which is really neat. And again, you're editing four different LFOs at the same time, which is cool. Uh, but after sample and hold, we have this chaos. That's silly, but uh, but it's there if you want to do cool effects like that. Um, you have V sine, and this is a sine wave that changes level every cycle, is what it says in the manual. You hear it's going up to a different level each time. I'm not sure exactly what that would be useful for, but it's there. <laughs> uh, and then, so the last one is step. So Zencore has a step LFO that you can set in Xenology Pro. And you can export from Xenology Pro and put it on here, and you'll have those step settings saved. However, you can't edit those steps on the MC-101. So there are there are a few limitations that you can do in Zen Xenology Pro that you can't do here, and that's one of them. But, um, I mean, I think that's okay. Uh, there's a few things in Xenology Pro, as far as I'm aware, you can't put your own samples in but here you can, and you can even put single cycle waveforms in here if you want to, uh, which is very, very powerful, but you can't edit the steps of the step LFO. And if I come up with a nice way, with a nice pack like I've done in the past to maybe add that sort of availability in with, with presets, I will let you know if I'm able to do that. But for now, you can't, um, so I would ignore that, that setting, honestly, if I were you, but you still have a lot of different LFO types here that I think are very powerful. So. That's that, that's LFO. LFO2 is exactly the same. Uh, wave, rate, filter, pitch, fader. The only important difference is that LFO2 is hardwired into pulse width modulation. Now again, there's four LFO2s, there's four different pulse width mod knobs for each oscillator, but LFO2 is hardwired to that one, so be aware of that. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's how it is here. Next up, we're getting to the end, I promise. I know it's been a long, little while, but uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot, a lot here. And I'm telling you, you can just take this and you're sitting on the bus and you can do so much sound design. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> on to EQ. You have gain, uh, you have um, ba -bum 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 -bum. EQ gain, EQ frequency. So you have, you can turn it on and off. Uh, you have low, medium, low, mid, and high. Uh, gains, which can go up or down, depending on what you want. Then you have the the uh, Q, which is the width of the band. It's the same width for all three bands, I believe. Uh, but you can change the where that band is centered for low, medium, and high. 25 to 28 is the matrix. This is a mod. This is a real mod matrix. You have a lot of different sources here. If you're, if you've seen my stuff before, I use these system control values a lot because if you set one of these values to something, you can then set your knobs, your motion knobs to system control one, two, and three, one, two, three, and four. So you have four lanes of motion for these things. So anything you want to automate, it's real easy to set system one, two, three, and four to those, those parameters. So you hold the two button and you can pick from a long list of these parameters. Um, look through, look through what you can do, but there, there's a lot here.
here. There's a lot here. And if you've seen my my like sound packs that I've put out in the past for the 101 that let you do like sound design on the 101, um, I guess those are a little bit out of date now, but they're still kind of neat, I think. But these are the these are the parameters that I use to set that stuff up. Uh, so yeah, a lot of options, and then this knob is depth, so you can make it go positive or negative or or however amount that you want to. The last screen, oh, I, I meant to say you can set as a source, you can set any CC number, which is phenomenal. That's so cool. You can set up all sorts of wacky stuff now. Like it'll take, or you can even set like pitch bend as a source. You can also set aftertouch or velocity or key follow or tempo as a source to modulate something. This can get, this can get wacky. I, I, this really, there's a lot of things here. I'm sure that I'm going to have fun with it. I'm sure you're going to have fun with it. I'm excited. So bear that in mind. Um, 29, last page, velocity sensitivity. Super cool. You can set the velocity sensitivity. So that means how hard you hit it will affect different things, different amounts. I don't know exactly what I goofed up that made this happen, to be honest. Um, but it doesn't matter. But velocity sensitivity. So like if I turn the this, I have a velocity sensitive controller here. But you can set the cutoff. That's hard to hear. But the cutoff actually goes lower when I hit it harder when I turn this down. But yeah, uh, also the depth of the filter envelope. So like if you have a sound that's articulated already with the filter envelope, you can change how much that's articulated. I haven't played with that yet, but I know there's a lot of cool stuff you can do that. And then you can even set the velocity to be release of the filter envelope if that's something you wanna do. So that's all of them. that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of options here. So I just wanted to, to make like a quick sound to demonstrate this, if that's all right with you. One thing that I've been having a ton of fun with is, I don't know if you were around for like, in my opinion, like the heyday of hyperpop a few years ago when you had like PC Music, Sophie, Charlie XCX, I don't know, Hannah Diamond, like those sorts of acts making cool sounds. Um, but uh, a hallmark that drew me in immediately to that genre were these big space filling sounds that incorporated a kick drum, but also a bunch of melodic stuff and a bass. And it all sounded like, it was like a thunk, thunk, thunk. Like if you listen to Sophie's like Immaterial or you know stuff like that, maybe even like Vroom Vroom with Charlie. And I wanna make something like that right here uh, because there's a lot of cool ways that we can do that. So I have an init tone. Nice, so I'm gonna go to partial editor. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn analog feel up just a little bit, uh, but not too much. Then we're oscillator one, I'm gonna set to PCM. I am gonna go to my cheat sheet here and I'm gonna bring up like a kick, a kick. So like 529 to 599 in bank A is gonna be kicks. Apparently, it's a lot of stuff here. Whoops. You might not hear that super well, but I kind of like that one for the moment. I'm gonna go as quick as I can, really. So next up, we're gonna go to oscillator two, which I'm gonna set to virtual analog, and I'm actually gonna set it to triangle uh, because I wanna make like a bass tone, but I wanna be able to hear it. So like so sine waves can give you like a nice, good like sub bass, but I want to be able to hear it, so. Triangle will give a little bit more on top. Uh, we're gonna turn it on. And we're gonna use course tune to lower it a ways. 24 maybe. Whoop. 24 maybe. Great, I hope you can hear that. Uh, if not, I guess maybe plug headphones in, turn the volume up. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna slide over. This is the cool thing, I'm gonna set up I'm gonna turn on ADSR mode. We're gonna to go to amplitude envelope and I'm gonna only edit partial two and we're gonna raise the attack. And now it's like it's kind of side chained to the kick and it makes them feel like tighter together and that's awesome. I'm gonna turn back on partial edit for all of them so I don't make any silly mistakes. 
I'm gonna come to three, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go to Super Saw because that's easy. I'm gonna lower the level a little bit. Uh, and I'm gonna give this also a little bit of an amplitude attack. So we're gonna just do partial three. Already that's got some meat to it. Turn all the partial edits back on. Now this is one of my favorite parts. We're gonna turn on partial four. We're gonna set partial four to PCM. I'm just gonna spin this knob. Kind of like that. It's already sounding pretty good, I think. I kind of like that. So we're gonna leave that where it is. And now, I mean, you can do LFOs, you can do whatever. I'm gonna jump out, I'm gonna hit exit, and I'm just gonna go to multi-effect. And we can put, you know, there's a lot of multi-effects here, which is cool as crud. Speaker sim. That sounds all right, depending on what you're going for. Uh, but I might want maybe like a compressor or something. That sounds cool, depending on what you're going for. But maybe, you know, we got a lot of options. What about if I make this I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my mind on that. Maybe a compressor. Ooh, a limiter. Cool, and then let's throw some reverb on. Just like that, I mean. Now I'm gonna, I mentioned in the other video, the new effect, the new exciter. There's so much you can do. I think that was pretty fast. I like that sound. Maybe I don't love it, but I like it. And um, yeah, I'm having a ball. I hope you like it. Let me know what else you might want to see me dive into. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I'm just so excited. I'm so happy to share this with you. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy this, do check out my new song. It's really cool. Uh, I like it. It was a remix I made with my little brother. Uh, he wrote the song, I remixed it. Then he helped master it and stuff. Uh, he's genius. Um, check out the song. It's playing right now. I bet you. You can see how I made it entirely on an MC-101. You can see how I did that in the video link. You can also check out the video. You can also find it on Spotify, anywhere else good tunes are sold and listened to. So check it out. That's all I got for now. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Have a good one, everybody. Now happiness is closing my eyes.